So first of all, I just kind of wanted to, uh, you know, set the, some groundwork. So when people hear the word drones, they they often uh, think of two different things. So when I speak of the word, or when I use the word drone, I'm talking about this hobby radio-controlled airplane, and not the drones like the military. Use, just to be clear, because they're. The terms are used interchangeably, but... Uh, and a lot of times like, people think it's always in the air when it can be on the ground, too, correct? Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a lot of people think it could be aerial. They're always aerial. That's... True. Okay, so, I mean, drones... Uh, basically, the, the drones these days are essentially flying robots. You know, they have their own onboard intelligence, and... Uh, actually, the camera's right behind you there. Okay, so... Yeah. So they have their own, their own onboard intelligence, and so uh, generally as the pilot, you're not actually controlling the attitude of the device or of the craft itself. It has its on, an onboard computer that can detect uh, you know, its, its altitude, its direction, compass, and so you basically, as the pilot, you just give it high-level commands like take off, land, go to this GPS location, and it does all the rest. So in that spirit, what I wanted to do is quickly demonstrate this little Lego device that I uh, that I built. It demonstrates uh, how a uh, machine can be uh, autonomous and self-balancing. So let me go ahead and get this started here. So this is just a Lego device here, and it uses a gyroscope sensor, and uh, it's uh, learning about gravity right now. Give it a second to think about it. If I hold it up. So, as you see, it's balancing on its own, and I'm not providing any input at all. So, similarly, that's how drones work these days. You just tell it to go, and it balances itself, and, and off you go. So, it has, and what this is here is a, uh, the algorithm is an inverted pendulum uh, for you math, physics uh, types, you know, probably recognize that uh, classic problem. So it uses a PID controller, and you can push it a little bit, and it regains its, its balance. So fun with Legos. Is that there just for kids, right? Uh, not anymore. <laughs> So what I'm going to talk about first is uh, capturing drone telemetry, uh, and then I'm using uh, a Wi-Fi network, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to give that a demonstration here. Uh, so the, the drone is capturing telemetry and uh, the type of data could be uh, GPS information, altitude, compass heading, and, and so forth. And uh, so on this particular drone over here, I have uh, an Arduino style piggyback board that's sitting on the back of this drone. So it's just a standalone battery powered uh, microcontroller and it uh, has a built in accelerometer. And so in this demo that I'll hopefully be showing you in a bit, it's uh, capturing its uh, acceleration information 10 times a second and then broadcasting through Wi-Fi, but it's broadcasting uh, UDP packets. And then on my laptop over here, I have a, a Node.js UDP listener that's listening for those packets, and as soon as it receives it, it writes it into a local Couchbase database. So this is typically how it would be uh, configured. Uh, you have the sensor controller here, uh, and then it's, uh, the way I have it here, it's actually a separate CPU piggyback on the, the, the drone itself. Uh, generally, you have all that capability built right into the flight controller. And this one here is a Pixhawk, a very popular flight controller made by 3D Robotics. And uh, then you could even use uh, your, your phone to... Um, to acquire that data, it might be a Bluetooth connection. In this case, I'm using Wi-Fi. So for the current technologies for, for capturing this data um, has been just uh, local acquisition on a local SD card. 
Um, and so you really don't get that data until after the drone lands and you take the little SD card out and plug it into your computer and download the file. Um, and then another option is radio or Wi-Fi, and then you're online, but uh, only when you're within Wi-Fi range, of course. So um, now I'm not going to be demonstrating Couchbase Mobile specifically tonight. They do not yet have a UDP listener, which I'm using for a one-way log write, but they are working on a uh, pluggable protocol stack, so you can actually plug in any, any protocol. Um, in addition to just Wi-Fi. So uh, with Couchbase Mobile, you do have the, the option of local storage when you're out, when you're offline, uh, away from a Wi-Fi network, so it's logging locally. It's got a local uh, data store using uh, SQLite. And then when, it, uh, when this drone uh, comes within Wi-Fi range, uh, it detects that it has the network connection uh, syncs up through a service that we provide called Sync Gateway, which in turn talks to Couchbase. So here's an example of, of the type of data you might capture from a drone. Here it shows a drone that looks like it took off over here, made a, a couple of trips at altitude, maybe uh, delivering some packages for Amazon way over here, coming back again. So here's a 3D map of its uh, positional history. So how many people think that Amazon's actually going to be delivering packages with, uh, with drones? Um, I know they're excited about it, but uh, I don't know, seeing drones buzzing around delivering packages, it'd, it'd be too tempting for teenagers, wouldn't it, to just kind of, yeah, just knock them out of the air. I'm not suggesting anybody do that, but I'd be tempted. And uh, so, um, so uses for uh, this telemetry can be quite important just in addition to uh, you know, positional history um, for archival purposes. Um, the, where I'm going with, with my drone here is, um, and I'll talk about this more in a minute, I'm not sure if you can all see this here, but I have the scale model of where I'm actually going with this. This is me. This is a bigger drone, not this one. It's the one I'm building back at my hangar up at Hayward. And uh, so, um, and I'll talk about more about that in, in a few minutes. So the, the purpose would be uh, like a uh, uh, Coast Guard rescue helicopter where you'd actually come in, lower a basket for, to somebody that's in, uh, in a, an emergency situation, lift them out and take them to, to safety. Um, my first uh, goal on this, though, is just for sport flying. I just want to fly this thing. And uh, again, for heavy equipment transport, like in a forest fire situation, you could uh, deliver 200-pound uh, packages really quickly into a firefighting situation. And then, um, you know, I kind of get ahead of myself because, uh, so I, I'm building this right now, it hasn't flown yet, it's a work in progress, and just real briefly, it uses these jet turbines on the outside for the, the majority of the thrust. This is the fuel tank here, it runs on jet fuel, which is just a uh, mixture of kerosene and, and aircraft oil. And uh, so, uh, that's how this works. It's basically just a standard, you know, like a quadcopter where I took the propellers off and then instead just put jet turbines in their place because, because I can. And uh, so the, the turbines are for the uh, majority of the lift. They do have a slow throttle response time though. So for balancing and hovering and steering, I've um, added these electronic or these electric fans out here for, uh, for steering. And then these, uh, these fans here for what's called yaw controller or twisting. And then uh, the ultimate goal is, I guess I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but uh, so this thing can do two things. Let me just make that clear. It can either travel really fast in the configuration that it's in, or it can, um, you can suspend uh, with a cable uh, a payload underneath it. So for high-speed flight, there's this uh, solid rocket booster that sits right in the center. And so this, uh, the, 
the, the hope is, is that this thing, the way it is sitting right there, I'm guessing, should be able to do about, oh, 350, 400 miles an hour. Pretty fast, but for like less than two minutes. And then so when it gets up to speed, up to 400 miles an hour, I do an air start of the solid rocket booster that uh, would take it uh, even faster. You know, I've, I've made claims that this thing can go supersonic, but, you know, it would, but, you know, since it has a pretty high uh, drag coefficient when you're looking at it that way, it would it'd probably go supersonic, but it would probably break apart. So um, I put a lot of money into this, so I'd hate to have that happen. So I'm spending the next year um, prototyping and, and uh, taking my time and, and uh, developing the flight control software. And uh, I have a, a hangar up at Hayward Airport, and uh, so I have a 20-foot tower that I use for testing. It's a, a tower that looks a lot like the Wright Brothers uh, catapult tower, or an oil bearing tower, for example. And there's cables running up and down, and uh, so it limits the degree of freedom to just up and down. So all I need to do is just uh, work on the thrust component. And uh, so I, I'm hoping to have the, the first test flights in my test tower in one or two months. So sport flying, does that mean human? Correct. Oh, okay. Yeah. The question was sport flying, and what I mean by that is uh, taking a person for a ride. So uh, this the next version that I'm building here would have a, a large central turbine um, producing about 250 pounds of thrust, and then there's this exhaust deflector that would keep the, the pilot out of harm's way. And uh, in the smaller prototype, I have that diverter here. So you can see that. So that's a steel cone that mounts on the bottom, and then your cable hooks into there, and then the passenger harness hooks onto that. Question? Uh, really stupid question. But uh, to understand is the battery weight uh, important? Because what we're, we're thinking is that it could have just a turbine that powers battery. And then you use the battery to, to control the motors, right. which can have way much faster response time. Right. right. And that the, the question is, or the comment was, why use batteries at all? Why don't you just uh, hook up a turbo generator and draw electricity off these turbines? And that is on the drawing board. Um, and it makes perfect sense. Uh, for one thing, jet fuel has 10 times the energy density that, that batteries do. Um, currently, though, the, the current uh, turbine-powered generators are uh, dedicated machines, meaning they're just generators. So I would actually have to sacrifice the thrust of one entire turbine to produce electricity. And if I did that, there'd be a lot more electricity than I really need. So at this point in time, um, inside these round tubes, I plan to put small batteries, you know, because I only have two minutes worth of flight anyway, so I can use small batteries. But your point is very valid. Ultimately, um, for this version, it would be, uh, it would be that. It would be I'd uh, allow the turbines to produce thrust and, all, and just draw a small amount of energy off of them to run uh, a generator to produce the electricity that I need for the, the electric fans. And eventually, though, I want to do away with electric fans altogether. Uh, in this prototype here, um, it has six turbines, uh, jet turbines around the outside, and then one in the center. So there's no electric, uh, no electric uh, control at all, no electric turbines. You know, Elon Musk, of course, uh, this is his shirt. I mean, it's his company shirt. Um, I'm a big fan, and he's come out several times. In fact, in the Iron Man 2 movie, he had a brief uh, interaction with Tony Stark, if anybody's ever seen the movie. But he's come out more recently in, uh, on Twitter and in, in public events where he's talking about building an electric jet. And uh, I've had some of my friends and I, we've kind of talked about it, kind of wondering what, he, what exactly he means. Because, uh, so this is, this is, you know, might be what he's talking about, electric fans. These are not turbines, though. When he talks about an electric jet, he's mixing terminology, unless he has something up his sleeve that he hasn't really shared yet. So I suspect what he means that he's developing battery technology that's so powerful that you could substitute a battery for jet. And uh, if that's the case, then um, he's on to something big. Because then this thing could be purely... Uh, electrical, 
But still, I mean, the energy, like I said, the energy density of jet fuel is 10 times that of current batteries, but that's changing, but still, that's 10 times, that's a big gap. And you'd have to close that gap to make it uh, an electric jet, whatever that might mean, practical. So, remains to be seen. So, let's, uh, back to drone telemetry. Um, so what I have here, I mentioned on this, the smaller drone over there, I have a, a microcontroller. Uh, it's uh, broadcasting UDP packets uh, 10 times a second. And uh, uh, it's impossible for anybody to read back there. But my point is, is uh, less than one page of code is all that's running. It's a C program that runs on that little microcontroller. It's running a, a Linux environment, running a C program in a loop and it just reads the accelerometer sensors that are built into that, that, uh, uh, that controller and then uh, does a, a Wi-Fi connection and then broadcasts over, over UDP. And then on this PC, uh, let me show you that code. It's a little easier to read because I have it in my, in my editor. So this is uh, what's running on the server as a listener. Um, so this is Node.js, uh, which is something new to me, but uh, I love Node.js. It's a great programming environment. And similarly, one page of code, and I've written a listener, uh, a web server, and a, uh, uh, a link, a connector to, to Couchbase, where here's the, the interesting line here, bucket.upsert, which is a uh, API command from Node.js, and I have also running in the background is Couchbase server on, on this laptop. So what I'm not demonstrating, but I have another demo, we don't have time tonight, where we actually use uh, the existing Couchbase mobile infrastructure. Um, and what I did with that, instead of having that little Arduino style device on it, I actually had an Android phone um, mounted on the, on the drone, and an Android phone has sufficient capabilities to actually run the current iteration of, of Couchbase Mobile, and it would basically do the same thing, and uh, my environment of choice for developing with that is uh, Xamarin, is a great platform, because uh, uh, I'm, I'm targeting, my development environment is Windows, and Xamarin allows you to write in C Sharp and Visual Studio but target iOS and Android devices, so it's, it's, uh, it's very slick. So here's the demo, so let's see um, if we're gonna be able to get this going. I'm gonna set the mic down for a second. So this is a uh, a Parrot AR drone. Don't use the microphone. So this is a Parrot AR drone. Uh, AR drone. Um, I think it's like 200 bucks. It's uh, a great system for like a beginner. Um, it doesn't use your typical radio uh, handheld radio control uh, module. It actually uses uh, Wi-Fi, and there's an app that runs either on your your iPhone or in this case my Android device that actually uh, I, I use it. Uh, this app that runs on this device to control to control the drone. So um, what I do here is it, it creates an ad hoc network. So um, in my Android settings, I connect to the network that it's publishing, and then I run the app. So let me go ahead and give that a try. So first I'll get the listener running, uh, and it already is. So it's, you can see it behind me. As I just simply moved it, actually, in case this doesn't take off right, you'll be able to see as I move this, it should be, but it's not. 
capturing data. Let me restart this guy. Supposed to be capturing data. When in doubt, reboot, right? <coughs> so you can see it's listening, and it, trust me, it worked. Um, it was <laughs> capturing data just before you guys got here. Um, so we'll see if this works. I'm just resetting this controller. Oh, we got it. So as you see, as I'm moving it. So I need to connect my Android device to the ad hoc network that it's publishing. And it is... So you people in the front here, you're very brave. <laughs> It should be fine. It has the styrofoam protectors, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to take it up five feet and land it. That's the plan. <laughs> and you're using the internet to power this, correct? Uh, yeah. So I'm using it's. Uh, you can see there's a uh, there's a camera on board there, and let me just get move this around so you can get a a view of the audience. Wave to your mom. Hi everybody. Hi mom. So let's give this a try. So, you know, to be honest, I've spent so much time building the hardware and everything. I'm like, oh, yeah, I need to learn how to fly these things, too, once in a while. So my piloting skills aren't the best. That's why I'm a little hesitant here. And anyway, so we'll see. It. <laughs> but on here, there's, there's this button, and it just says, take off. And it'll go up to five feet, and then it turns to land. I'm going to press that. So there's not really a lot that I can do wrong. One would hope. So let's give it a try. That's a good sign. Good enough for me. <laughs> you can see that it, it captured some data. And now let's take a look at uh, the Couchbase interface. Uh, I have a question, by the way. And there's the, the data. That is our takeoff. And so. It worked. Yes, question. Would, would this be able to do it from like a very remote distance? No, it would not. The question was, and I'll, let me go ahead and talk about that. <coughs> the question was, could this do this from a remote distance? And the answer is no. Um, it's uh, Wi-Fi based, which is very limited. So this isn't necessarily very practical. It's uh, just pretty much for demonstration purposes. However, another project I'm working on is uh, this little baby here, um, a high-powered rocket. You know, it's like the model rocket that I've always wanted. And uh, let me go ahead and pop it open so I can show you what's on the inside, and then I'll explain a little bit about the electronics that uh, it uses. <coughs> So inside it, it has this uh, payload bay, and then it actually couldn't come apart, but I, will, uh, I won't do that right now, just for time. But inside, it's the electronics, and the electronics, in this case, it doesn't use Wi-Fi. Um, I've leased some uh, Iridium satellite time, and there's this uh, little uh, transceiver. It can transmit and receive up to the Iridium satellite network. I find that amazing, without an antenna, or anything, it uh, can connect to uh, a global satellite network. And so the way this is going to work, this rocket's going to go up, and at Apogee, it's going to broadcast a packet of uh, information, it's altitude information, up to the Iridium satellite network, and then down to an Iridium satellite ground station, and then they, in turn, um, offer multiple services. In this case, what I'll do is I'll do an HTT post 
to a web service that I'm running on Amazon, which is also running Couchbase. So it goes from the rocket up to the satellite, through the Iridium satellite network down to a ground station, through uh, a web service, and then finally to Couchbase. So that's the plan on, on that. Um, so that uh, gives you a little more range than, uh, than Wi-Fi. So this would be um, global, global access to answer your question. So that's pretty much it. Um, so what I'll do a little bit more is talk about uh, this drone here. Um, so what inspired me on this particular project was number one, back in 2004, um, Scaled Composites and uh, Bert Rutan's team uh, did a, the first private astronaut to space project where they had a, uh, a spaceship that flew on the bottom of a jet, they dropped it, and then it uh, lit up its rockets, and then it went up to and did a suborbital flight. And uh, so um, Mike Melville, he was like 62 years old at the time, was my hero. That was in 2004. I actually got to meet him. And uh, so, um, you know, back in high school, back, you know, a few years ago, I wanted to be an astronaut and, you know, uh, didn't make it. And, uh, but now that interest is, is renewed. And so what this basically is, is a scaled-down version of Burt Rutan's Spaceship One. Um, and then more recently, um, NASA landed the Curiosity rover on Mars in 2012. And the way they did that is they, uh, they had this, uh, the rocket come down um, with a, a quad rocket configuration, kind of like this. And then instead of actually landing on the surface, they lowered the rover by a cable down to the surface of Mars released the cable and then it bugged out and landed or actually crashed elsewhere. And then, so the Curiosity rover to this day is still traveling on Mars. You know, they, they're uh, doing a lot of science. Uh, you know, they, they're one of the ones that, uh, you know, uh, verified the, the salty water more recently on Mars and, and so forth. But at any rate, uh, I saw that quad rocket landing that rover by a cable and that's what inspired me. It's like, you know, I wonder if there's a commercial application to that. And so that's uh, kind of what inspired me for this, for this project. So, um, again, these are um, jet turbines. They run on jet fuel. This is the, the fuel tank in the middle. I mentioned that, I believe. It, uh, it's jet fuel, kerosene, and aircraft oil. And then uh, the batteries are in these round tubes. And... Uh, it uses just a standard drone flight controller, very similar to, to that one, and just a standard radio control mechanism. And so when this thing takes off, the plan would be um, it would take off and hover, and then you'd give it full throttle, for example, and it would be on its own at that point. It would fly autonomously and uh, fly straight up at 400 miles an hour, so it'd hit, you know, it'd go up about five miles in about one minute. And then at that point, it'll have an onboard parachute. It'll pop out the parachute, and it'll come back and land. So that's that's the goal. In the meantime, what I've done, um, I've built this test tower, like I mentioned at my my hangar up in Hayward, um, that limits the motion to just up and down. And uh, so I'm learning the the throttle response and and writing the flight control software because most drones, you know, when you throttle up. It, uh, it just basically sends the same signal to all the propellers and it naturally takes off. In this case though, I have uh, 12 different propulsion units, three jet turbines and nine electric fans. And they each have a different throttle response and so the flight software has to account for, for those differences. Uh, to maintain level flight, you know, if it starts to tip, it would give, you know, um, the, one of the turbines, for example, it's like, okay, we're starting to tip, we need some more thrust, but it's a response curve, it's like zero to full throttle takes about five seconds, and that's not fast enough to keep it level, and that's why I need the, the electric fans to kind of pick up the slack in the meantime, and uh, they have about five pounds of thrust each. Um, these turbines have about 30 pounds of thrust each, and uh, so, Combined thrust about 100 pounds. This thing weighs about 40 pounds. Uh, and so, you know, when you pick something up, 
you know, you, you're picking up twice its weight if you're pulling two Gs. So theoretically, this particular one could, could lift 30 pounds. But um, like I said, I have my test tower with counterbalances built into it. So that's plenty of uh, thrust to actually lift me off the ground a few feet and then back down again. And the, the flight control mechanism, of course, when I'm strapped into it, uh, so here, let me hold this up. So when I'm strapped into that, of course, you can't be, um, you, you want to be able to fly it and control it, like turn left and turn right or land. But of course, you know, you're, you're pretty busy right now, and uh, so you can't really have uh, a radio control unit or your phone in your hand giving it commands. So what I've done, here's uh, my prototype Iron Man suit. Welcome, Hi, Tony. Tony Stark, right here. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, and so, um, got the helmet here. It's got a heads-up display, you know, you got to have a heads-up display. And it has the, the Jarvis British voice built into it, so I can actually, it has voice recognition. And, uh, and then in the gloves, what I have um, for flight control, I have um, sensors built into the gloves that can detect acceleration, compass. Basically, they're just small versions of the flight controller that you'd have on a drone. And so in each hand, um, you have a controller, and then on the back, of your neck, you'd also have another controller. And so the way it works, um, so you're, you're standing here, the drone's up above you, hovering at idle speed, you raise your arms, and it takes off. And for landing, you just lower your arms. So it's body gesture, flight control, just like Iron Man. <laughs> Question? How far have you planned on going with this? Um, oh, I was going to mention, the question was how far am I planning to go with this? I'm planning to go all the way. No, um, <laughs> no um, uh, for me, uh, I'm, I'm planning a publicity event in about two years where I plan to, uh, to uh, succeed where Evil Knievel didn't make it across the Snake River Canyon. So I'm planning a Snake River Canyon jump. Um, and as a backup location, Marble Canyon in, in Arizona, in case I don't get permission from uh, the Twin Falls, Idaho uh, City Council. There's seven people on that council I've been in touch with. Um, there's a gentleman that wanted to fly a, or fly, wanted to jump a motorcycle over the canyon again, um, Big Eddie. Um, he weighs about 350 pounds and he's about six years old. And uh, they voted him down. Um, actually, but uh, four to three, so it was actually close. You know, so, and this is a lot. You know, this is not, what I'm suggesting here is not death-defying, because, you know, I'd practice it many times before I do that. And, uh, and one of the concerns was, is on the landing side of that canyon is uh, Native American property. And they were concerned about uh, people trampling the, the land, and, but more importantly was the landing ramp. It took up so much uh, space. But for me, you know, I'm taking, I could take off and land from the back of a flatbed truck. You know, so I don't need a ramp. I just take off, up, and then land like any, that. Looking at any, as you get further developed, any possibility of developing a TCAS system for collision detection? Yeah, the question was, what about collision detection? Um, basically, I'm leveraging and borrowing existing technology that the drones already have, and so that uh, should come along as, as part of the, the, the packages I keep up with, uh, the drone technology. Um, the, the flight control software that I'm using right now is called ArduPilot. It's an open source um, flight control software uh, that I need to modify for the different throttle response curves. And then uh, another uh, where I want to go with this is, um, and this is where I was kind of alluding to earlier, where I get kind of ahead of myself. You know, of course I need to make, I need to see if this thing's going to fly first. But long term, um, what I want to do consider is. Uh, uh, orbital re-entry, catch and retrieve. So you have a small payload coming in hot, and uh, it's doing about 15,000 miles an hour, and you launch one of these babies, and you go up and catch it, and you bring it back right to your doorstep. So um, a small payload, two or three pounds, I'd uh, fly up, uh, turn, match its speed, um, let out uh, either a magnetic or some other connect mechanism, grab the device, uh, slow it down, bring it down, and then deliver it to back to the owner. So that's one of the, one of the long-term plans, but uh, we'll, we'll see. Again, I just need to get this thing flying first. Yes? Um, it seems like it could be 
useful to have uh, some kind of implied communication even when you are outside Wi-Fi mm -hmm. So uh, how useful do you think it's potentially using uh, satellite? I know that for smaller drones, uh, it's difficult because uh, communication with satellite requires a lot of power, but it seems that it's less an issue for you because you have... Yeah, it doesn't require a lot of power at all. This uh, this little radio I hear, or that I have here, I mean that has this is you know full duplex right. satellite communication. Right. So like, do you, I think based on what you said, I believe you don't have that yet for in-flight communication. Correct. There's the not for this drone. You mean? Uh -huh. Yeah, I do not have in-flight communication but for do, this. Do you see that being feasible? Yes. Or yeah, that's I'm prototyping in that model rocket yeah. that I showed you to develop the technology and then ultimately implement that into this, so this will have a full satellite comm link. Yeah. And of course then, you know, after I jump the Snake River Canyon in five years, I want to jump actually a lot longer than five years, 15 years. Um, uh, Mariner Valley on Mars, the, big, the biggest valley in the solar system, 10 times bigger than the Grand Canyon, so I got my sights on that. I'd be pushing 70 though when I did that, so. Um, We'll see how that goes. But anyway, yes, question back there. Uh, yeah, I know this is not the direction you're going, but how small can you make this thing? Can I, uh, Right, so the question is how small you can make this. Um, these are about the smallest size of, uh, of turbines that you can purchase these days. There's some a little bit smaller that produce like 15 pounds of thrust. But these have been in uh, use for about 15 years for people that make radio-controlled jets. And uh, so it might be possible to engineer something smaller. But at that point, you're probably better off using uh, electric uh, technology and, and standard propellers. Well, let me follow that up. I mean, you can use electric technology, standard propellers, and 3D printing them so that they're small. Right. How small As far as... Turbine technology or blade propeller technology? Let's use yeah. Well, I mean, I, I have a drone, and maybe some of you do too, these micro drones that fit in the palm of your hand, or even smaller. So they, they get very small. Their lifting capabilities, of course, are pretty small too. I mean, they can carry a very tiny camera, but as far as payload capabilities, um, you know, they really don't have a lot of uh, capabilities. And, you know, you're basically, you're, you're, limited by the laws of physics. You know, to lift something of any weight, you gotta displace that same, you know, equivalent amount of air. You know, so the whole concept of a flying car will never happen, will never happen. Um, the propeller's speed, RPM, for an electric device that could spin a propeller fast enough to lift the car, the wingtips of the propellers would be traveling faster than the speed of sound. So they would produce a sonic boom, um, and would just simply not be practical. Plus, we don't have the battery technology and the motor technology to produce or to make a flying car. It was turbine-powered, perhaps, but this thing is loud. That I mean, this thing, these little things are the loudest things I've ever heard in my life. So, you know, that's, you know, a practical consideration is just the noise. Um, people have asked me if you could use this for transportation. No, it's, it's just too noisy. Yeah, so, and the, and the flight times are very short, less than five minutes. But if you're rescuing somebody from the top of a burning building, you only need 30 seconds to get up there and get them back down again. You know, so with a five minute flight time, you just saved five people, you know, so. You don't need a lot of flight time, you know. So I'm sacrificing flight time with uh, lifting capabilities here. It's a trade off. So in short, I'm talking about the Wi-Fi activity. In short, we can use the SIM card to kind of local cover sites, like cell phone covers. Yeah, yeah, so this, I'm just using, I have a, a little Wi-Fi piggyback Arduino board that goes on that microcontroller, and it's just using standard Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. Oh, cell phone towers. The question is cell phone towers and GSM connection. Um, there are some laws about putting, basically, uh, phones on a free flight device. It's against the law. Um, and keep in mind, you know, you see cell phone towers, they are vertically polarized, which means that the cell, cell phone signal goes out. It does not go up. You know, um, very, you know, once in a while you'll get cell phone connection in a jet when you're up at 30,000 feet. Not very often, you know, you're lucky if you do. But typically, um, cell phone towers purposely transmit horizontally. 
And so to, to try to track something vertically, like, you know, um, uh, uh, helium balloon, you know, you know, high altitude balloon launches, I consider, I've been doing some of that work too, and uh, looking at the communication possibilities and using uh, GSM and cell phone towers. It's just not practical. So you really need something, you know, like satellite communications, if you really need that degree of, or if you need that, that distance. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Yeah. Okay. One quick question here. If you, if you fly this, uh, will you require a, like a private pilot with rotorcraft license? Yeah. The question is, what kind of licenses and regulations are there? Uh, I'm ignoring those. You know, <laughs> there there are. Of course, there are. Um, when I get the the full size one built, I would likely register it as an experimental aircraft, and I am a pilot. You know, so I would fly it as an experimental uh, aircraft. So, yeah, it'd be uh, pretty limited. But, you know, that's kind of my goal is just to just fly this thing. Or you could just do, you know, like they do with base jumps. You just do it and get out of there real quick. So that's another possibility. But you don't really want to do that when you have sponsors, you know, filming you and everything. It's like, yeah, you just broke the law. Thanks. You know, so anyway. And Couchbase has been great. They, they sponsored. They, they bought this turbine right here for me. So thank you, Couchbase. So, and they're hiring. I mentioned that again. So we're hiring. So, okay. So that's it. So thank you, everybody.